Hey again, YouTube. Uh, welcome back to Snack Time with Petey. Today we have Pringles Scorching Hot Chili Lime. Oh boy. This is uh, out of character. <laughs> uh, I like spicy food. I like hot food. I don't like when it's, um, when it like burns the shit out of your mouth. But I've, I've had habanero hot sauce. I, I like hot stuff. So these are chili habanero, chili lime, excuse me. Um, and they're part, part of the chip is not dusted with the magical uh, powder. So the initial flavor is traditional Pringle. And there's an acidic, like what is supposed to be the lime. Then there's the habanero heat. This is a well-balanced. Um, it's equal to a flaming Hot, the hotness. There is another level of hot chili lime Pringle, which forgive me for not remembering if it's atomic or um, brimstone. I, I forget what they call it, but that's a purple. Um, it's purple on the can, chili lime Pringle. But yeah, I give that a thumb up. If you're looking to try, I, I you know, I'm really kind of fat and lame. I'm not like, hey, hey, dog, like constantly elbowing you like let's go get some chicharrones i'm not i don't do that but from time to time i'll throw you a curveball cut, pull up with the uh weird flavor like i'm not into taquitos or takis taki time i'm not into that um chili lime snack although um i was i was tempted to uh just go with the ridged like i'm gonna try a different type of pringle today I'm going to get the Ridge. And like they've got all this like ranch, cucamonga, all this weird flavors. So there you go. The chili lime Pringle. And the benefit with this is that it's, it's legitimately hot. So for me, whenever anything's really hot like that, I don't eat a lot of it. Like I'll put a little bit, you know, the super hot sauce on and then. I'll have a couple of bites without the super hot sauce. Then I'll put a little bit more on. Um, so the benefit with this is that can of Pringles is probably going to last me a week or two, which normally a can of Pringles lasts a couple minutes. Now, today I replaced the eighth inch jacks. I initially had used these aluminum. The first time I ran into this type of jack, they were gold plated or gold. Although I really don't think they're really gold. Uh, you can see on the bottom, it says uh, 12 AC. And then to the right and left, like at the, it says in and out. Okay, well at the bottom, those black circles with the gold, those are the new jacks. So this, um, they sell these at Tata, and it's a four con four connection. But let's say you're using a three connection, traditional um, eighth inch, like a Walkman plug. Um, how it's laid out, there's a long tongue on the bottom. The top tongue is the fourth prong, and that uh, ohms out to the ground on your connector so you basically just ignore that fourth connector hook it up normal and it works just as well and the this uh, this has a uh, larger diameter plastic bushing and then there's a fastener that screws on so I <clears throat> initially the, I had drilled these holes and they were kind of sloppy and I tried to clean them up and they got they got enlarged so I had to use a washer the steel was bent 
and I, I, I had a washer on there and then I had this thing tightened and I had put some, what do you call it, Loctite. Uh, it just was kind of a mess. And looking at these connectors, like the size of the fastener is so small and like ready to strip out. I don't go for that. This is like the minimum connector that I'm comfortable with, that little tiny thing. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're out there and you've, you've used eighth inch connectors before in your projects and you're not thrilled about what's available, uh, there's another type that is a snap in where you drill a 5 16th hole or something and it just snaps in. And those those are really nice. Like they've got a they've got a much even a larger diameter faceplate, but they're like ten bucks. I think I I think I paid six for mine. I found the deal on mine, and I used that when I modded my Zoom G3. So yeah, I like these connectors. They're cool, and I had done a demo. This is a stereo tube preamp. Thanks to my buddy Heavy Metal ATC. Check out his channel for his uh, wildly entertaining and informative history of the guitar series he's doing now. Uh, I had showed this off. I had basically just thrown this circuit in the box, added a switch, an LED, inputs, output, and a AC port, and then showed it off. And the jacks were munged up on it. They weren't the best. They just probably wouldn't. You know what? I bet you they would have been fine. But I said I was going to fix them, and I did. So I feel good about that. Uh, today we received an, a parts order. Um, I needed some things to build a PCB for what's known as the Benson preamp. This is a Fendery four knob preamp. It's a JFET preamp that's going to be the centerpiece of a tweed amp I'm going to build with a fender badge on it, some chicken head knobs. So that stuff came in. Um, the 5.1 volt Zener diode that I was waiting on for the MXR noise gate came in. That was an eBay. Uh, so it looks like everything that I need for now with the exception of the Vactral, I ordered the Vactral for the noise gate for the Dodd 230 or the STFU, which is from Electric Effects. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is assembling the amplifier with the MXR and seeing how, how does it do, how does that MXR circuit work. So that's probably what's going to be happening tomorrow. I'll see. How does it work? How does this Thunderbird preamp work set it up as a test rig make sure everything functions and if it if it works and I like how the noise gate I like the attack and the release and the adjustment knob well then I can go ahead and drill the amp out and start mounting stuff and then begin the final wiring process so there's light at the end of the tunnel for that amp um, it gee that one it was this was like it consumed some time not so much working, but just a lot of thinking and talking about it. Um, and in the meantime, I've got two more amps to build. I've got a micro amp. Uh, these boards came in. And these are, this is ridiculous. I, I just, I just had, I had to. I got, I got a single 18650 holder which is going to power this amp board. And here it is. There's the amp board. As you can see, it's there's a chip and a capacitor, it looks like. And, and there's actually, there's some resistors on there too. But it looks like, is it even labeled? Oh yeah, it's labeled.
you're never going to be able to read that. It's uh, audio output plus, audio output minus. Mute, ground, audio input, and power 5 volts. So this is a mono, um, I believe it's rated at 5 watts. And I'm going to build this into, I have a Chrome gift box. And it's about the size of a pack of cigarettes if you elongate it, made it a little taller. And I'm going to build a wood frame, a wooden frame to go all the way around it. And then in the back, there's going to be a little lip that sticks off where I'll mount the battery holder. So you can pop the battery in or pop the battery out. And it's going to have a volume knob in the front, a chicken head volume knob, and a power switch. Much like the uh, microamp that I built last week that I did a demo video on. So I've got that microamp build. I don't know when that's going to happen. That's like not going to be happening right away. I'm pro probably going to be doing the test rig uh, on the for the what we're calling... The Thundee and then finish that Thundee up then it's going to be the Fender Tweed amp and then I'll do this micro and I'm not sure about that Fender Tweed when that's going to happen I think more than likely I'm going to I'm going to populate the board and then bag it up and put everything that I need all, uh, all the parts because I pulled the parts from my stash I've got a it's a case for a gun cleaning kit and that was my father's and I've got this case and uh, I actually picked that out for him it was on sale and we were at Kmart and I was like mom let's get this for dad for Christmas she was like no I'm like what do you mean no he's got all these guns and we go shoot them and this is a gun cleaning kit it's something he should have so she bought it for him, and I, I have this case, and I know that's what it is. I, I know it, because I remember buying it, and I remember where it was next to all the weapons in the, in the laundry room, you know. So <clears throat> I've got everything pulled, and I'll put, put that sucker in there. More, more than likely, what's going to happen is I'm going to finish up this Tweed Amp. We'll, uh, it'll be springtime, summertime be focusing on making music live and videoing that and editing those videos and bringing those to you guys. I'm not sure how much new music I'm going to have to offer this year. There might be some repeats. I haven't I haven't written. I you know, it's it's going to be psychologically um I know from the past that I'm really going to be fucked up for a long time because of semantical nightmare. Because some people said nice things to me about it, it's going to intimidate me to be scared about writing. Um, and that's just the way my brain works. So uh, we'll see. I do know we're going to go out and we're going to make music live, health uh, permitting. And I'm probably not going to have time to finish another amp. So that's what's going on we got parts coming in and uh, still waiting on some stuff got a Vactrel that's out there that I'm waiting on that killed me it, it was like it was three dollars for the shipping and two dollars for the Vactrel it was five bucks for one little tiny component that's what I hate about D DIY five bucks for this little tiny thing anyway i i mean i went through all of our cds cells and all of our vectorals and nothing i had was even close so what can you do all right you guys thanks for joining me on this one snack time with pd i'll see you soon hug your pets and peace <laughs>